Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante in Silicon Angle's continuous coverage of EMC World. We're back with Dave Cahill. Uh, we had to take a break to interview Sanjay Merchandani, and uh, Dave, thanks for, for letting us call an audible there. We were talking about uh, Solid Fire, your unique focus on cloud service providers. You're the only all flash uh, array company focusing exclusively on cloud service providers. Uh, you were talking about how you're in beta, you're working it hard, getting a lot of good feedback. Bring us back to that and give us a, a quick update on that program. Yeah, so we are, uh, like I said before, we're in uh, early access with a select group of cloud provider customers. We'll continue to beat on the product uh, with them uh, over the course of the next few months, and then towards the end of the year, we'll go full GA to the broader market. Uh, you know, and market focus from our standpoint is large-scale multi-tenant clouds. Uh, and where that's most prevalent today is, is public clouds, uh, large-scale virtual private clouds, and private cloud providers. Yeah, so um, we've seen a lot of action in this space, obviously, uh, across the entire hierarchy. Right. And um, we saw EMC, we're here at EMC World, they just made a big acquisition, or I don't know how big, actually. There's a lot of rumors about the number. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had Rich Napolitano on earlier, the acquisition's going to be part of his group, and he said, we never announced the number. You don't know the number, I said I called 400. But the, but the Globe did. I called 400, the Globe, The Globe, right. <laughs> that's you might know, well be you, fact. What did they say, 420 was yeah, their 430, number? Yeah, 430, yeah. 430, I had called 400, but I mean, you know, yeah, the market's frothy, but it's a huge market. It's got to be 20 plus billion yeah. you know, of total available market. And um, you guys got to be excited about that. On the one hand, it's, it's validation. Right. You know, on the other hand, it might be like, uh-oh, <laughs> now we got to move. Yeah, you know, it, it, when you're at the intersection of flash and cloud, your life's noisy to begin with, right? And, and, and so, <laughs> in some ways, EMC doesn't do us any favors by, by paying 430 million for Extreme IO, but but at the end of the day, it's an incredible validation of the opportunity. And, and the opportunity here isn't Flash. EMC did not pay 430 million for Flash. They paid for a next-gen archi architecture capable of scaling out on a new medium. And that's the difference. I mean, you can look at this market and it is, it is so noisy and everyone's raising their hand and throwing IOPS in a box and saying, I'm in business. But the trick is, you know, when you're architecting for scale, it's a totally different set of design constraints. And I think what you saw with EMC is they're so close to the flash market that they are able to see that, hey, you know what? We cannot retrofit an existing architecture into this problem. We need to go get our own. You know, Extreme IO slotted in. They grab it early enough. They can influence development. They can spread it across their lineup. I mean, I think it's a great move, but for us, it's an incredible validation of the challenge that we're trying to solve every day, which is scale out. Next gen, scale out storage systems with Flash as a means to an end, but, but Flash is just the beginning of the story, otherwise you're dead in this space. So you're saying that the EMC move to acquire Extreme IO was an admission that, con that the traditional controller-based architectures aren't going to cut it in this market space, and so they had that piece with the enterprise flash drives, and they had a PCI, you know, connect yeah. with VF Cache, and there's a big opportunity in between that they were missing. Well, I mean, you know, th now they have a whole portfolio, right? They called it Baskin Robbins. Uh, you could take you take VF Cache, you take Thunder, whenever it comes out, you take Extreme IO, and then you take their legacy, and then you let you know EMC Salesforce. As long as you position it accordingly, have at it. But the trick is, you know, when do those flavors start dripping into each other, right? And as long as you segment them based on workload or customer set appropriately, that's fine. Is it the key, Dave, the software and the management capabilities around that infrastructure? I mean, that's, you know, listen, uh, the flash is a, is a commodity component of the architecture. You know, we're, we're, and, and to me, it is, it is just the beginning of the innovation. You take this hardware without the ability to scale, without efficiency, uh, without performance control, um, without complete automation, you can't drive the economics necessary to take this flash and, and, and you know, let's go at two, per, two or three percent of the market today with super high performance IOPS. To open up the rest of that market, you need software. And you got to crack the code on the economics of efficiency, automation, performance control to open up that market much wider than just that two to three percent of the workloads that need screaming fast IOPS. You know, last year at uh, VMworld, we talked to some of your early customers, and one of the things that we uncovered in those discussions was they're different from the traditional enterprise guys, right? They're thinking about running a business. We were just talking to Sanjay Merchandani about uh, uh, transforming IT, go do an IT as a service, and I'll tell you, he's way ahead yeah. of the average IT shop. Most IT shops are just starting to think about this right. transformation. Whereas cloud service providers, that's their business. Yeah. And so, one of the things they said to us was, look, we're looking, we're interested in the capability that companies like SolidFire bring because we can add value on top of that or we can sell that value to our customers. Right. So it's not a cost plus model, it's a, hey, 
this is something you need and you'll pay through the nose for because right. it's quality of service around applications. Yep. Is that is that bearing out to be true in your early beta trials? Or? I mean, this, the, the, the cloud provider market is, is survival of the fittest, right? The, the biggest difference at the highest level is, you know, you've got guys, traditional enterprises, where IT is a cost center. For this cloud service provider set, IT is a profit center, right? And these guys look at it in terms of quality of service, cost of service, or breadth of service. And if they're not improving or differentiating relative to the gorillas in the space, on you know, quality of service, cost of service, or breadth of service, then they're going to be out of business. And, and that's the, the mandate that they have, and so it is totally about delivering a, a service to their end customers, not just turning a bunch of knobs uh, to a captive user base, which is what traditional enterprise IT is about. Okay, so um, I'll give you the last word. You know, what's next? What should we be looking for from, uh, from, from SolidFire over the next uh, six months? Yeah, so from a solid fire perspective, I mean, I think the most interesting thing for us is, is just heads down in development right now. So over the next six months, we're going to continue to push forward with the early access customers, uh, let them prove out the solution, and let them start to charge to market um, with, with their respective services. And also, I think you're going to see the market develop as well, where cloud providers realize that it's not just about hosting data. They need to host applications. They need to compete on breadth of services relative to Amazon. And for that, that requires different mindsets and requires different architectures. You think we're going to see uh, emerge this year a new definition of uh, what's, what was traditionally known as tier one storage? You know, the EMC VMAX, the, the IBM DS8000, HDS. I mean, those are, the, those are the guys who are the only tier one players. You think right. the, we're going to see a new definition there that's around multi-tenant, around supporting horizontal applications across the portfolio? So I, I don't as much look at it in terms of tiers. I, I always break the market into either workloads or customer sets. And I think it, it, you know, more than anything else, you're going to see this customer set continue to emerge that cares about large scale, multi-tenant cloud environments. Yeah, when I say tier, I don't mean tiering. I, know right. I, I confuse you with that. I mean, no, you mean like the tier upper one. class, you're right, versus yeah, yeah. module, yeah, okay. Okay, all right, yeah, yeah. no, it, it, you know, in that sense, I, I do think that yes, there is a new class of guys going at that performance tier. I mean, that's another thing that EMC did with Extreme IO, is you know, look at the profit pool that was at risk. Where is EMC, you know, that sim <laughs> clarion market, right? It's a the cheap hedge. The, end of the day, 430 <laughs> million is, is, a bargain. is nothing yeah, relative absolutely. to the opportunity there. All right, so. Dave Cahill, hey, thanks very much. Great thanks, to man. see you, man. All right, as always. Have a good trip back. Uh, keep it right there, we'll be right back.